The Israeli Prime Minister said on Monday that a date had been set for an invasion of Rafah. Now, Rafah is the last refuge for Palestinian civilians displaced by relentless Israeli bombardments that have flattened their home and their neighborhoods. Israel says it is also the last significant area of Hamas combat units. More than one million people are crammed into the southern city in desperate conditions, short of food, water and shelter. Foreign governments and organizations have urged Israel against storming Rafah for fears of a bloodbath. In Jerusalem, Netanyahu said, and I'm going to quote here, victory requires entry into Rafah and the elimination of the terrorist battalions there. It will happen. There is a date. However, he did not specify the date. Now, far-right ministers, Itamar Benguir and Bezalel Smotrich, denounced Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's decision to reduce military presence in Gaza. Benguir said, it, if Netanyahu decides to end the war without a large-scale offensive in Rafah to defeat Hamas, he will not have a mandate to continue serving as Prime Minister. Hundreds of residents who had been living in tents in Rafah ventured back to their devastated home areas on Monday following the Israeli pullback. Some rode on donkey carts, some took rickshaws and open deck vehicles, while some decided to walk back. Palestinian medical officials said their teams had recovered more than 80 bodies from areas where the soldiers had operated in the past months. Eid al-Fitr, the feast that ends Islam's fasting lunar month of Ramadan, is expected in Gaza on Wednesday, depending on a clear sighting of the moon. But there is little to cheer about for Palestinians. Some Hospitals have reported kids dying of malnutrition and starvation since last month and have warned of other preventable deaths because key supplies are lacking. International pressure on Israel to let more aid into Gaza increased last week after airstrikes targeted a relief convoy and killed seven aid workers. In response to the pressure, Tel Aviv said it had approved the reopening of the area's crossing into northern Gaza and the temporary use of Ashdod port in southern Israel. Southern Israel. Israeli opposition leader Yair Lapid visited Washington for high level talks. He said a deal to release hostages held in Gaza is difficult but doable. The former Prime Minister's Washington visit comes as Benjamin Netanyahu faces pressure at home and abroad. Fellow opposition politician Benny Gantz, who, unlike Lapid, is part of Netanyahu's war cabinet, last week called for national elections to take place in September. Lapid asked about the call declined to speak about Israeli politics while he was in the U.S. Well, I feel uncomfortable, if you excuse me, to discuss Israeli politics standing in front opposite the, the State Department. Uh, I will have enough time to do this in Israel if you'll come over and ask the question again. Nancy Pelosi is the former House Speaker and a key Biden ally signed a letter on Friday from dozens of congressional Democrats to President Biden and Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. They all urged a halt to weapons transfers to Israel. Support from Pelosi, a veteran member of Biden's Democratic Party for stopping the transfer of weapons, showed the view is increasingly becoming mainstream in the party. U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren argued on Friday that there is ample evidence that Israel is committing genocide in Gaza. Warren said, it is wrong to starve kids in a civilian population in order to try to bend them to your will. It is wrong to drop 2,000-pound bombs in densely populated areas. She added, if you want to do it as an application of law, I believe that they'll find that it is genocide and they have ample evidence to do so.